All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Cat and Beats, and welcome to uh, mixing and mastering in the box using Fab Filter Pro plugins. Uh, so we got this track, and we've been mixing it, and it sounds like this right now. Personally. I think it sounds great. I don't think it needs um, that many extra sexy magic things. And in last week's video, you saw how I put together what I then called my tubas. But to be really honest, that was already a big part of the mastering chain. Um, and in common terms, it will be called a pre master as you try to get it as sexy as possible, and basically balance out your low, your low mids, uh, your high mids and your highs and get the compression to sit right. And we've done that dynamically with multiband compression, um, with Fat Filter Pro C2 compression and a Pro Q3 uh, compression as well. So basically it's just one whole thing of compression and nothing's really static. So that's really nice about Fat Filter. Now, what we're gonna be doing is making the final master. So that's why we're gonna, we, I can kind of get away with calling this mastering. Uh, but we're basically just gonna work with a limiter and that's it. So we're gonna dive in deep to the Fab Filter Pro L2. Uh, here she is, she's gorgeous. I'm gonna make sure I have a couple of settings already set up before I even start. Here, oh, boop, yeah, well, yes, I want that, but here, uh, go away. I want my short-term set, so it's short-term LUFS setting. Uh, next up, I want my output to be oh, minus one uh, dB so that I have a true peak value of minus one db the reason for that is we're doing something for an um one second let me turn this stuff off so we're doing something for uh, an online release and with online releases what i tend to always do is make sure that uh, i have one db of extra headroom and that little extra headroom will get filled up once the waveform which we're going to finally you know uh, bounce out gets converted to mp3 when it's uploaded to YouTube or it gets converted to OGG once it's uploaded to Spotify um, or to iTunes. Once it's uploaded and it goes from Wave, you get 1 dB of extra digital gain. So basically just 1 dB of gain extra on top of it. So what I don't want to do is set out a track with uh, 0 dB of true peak value and then all of a sudden it will just uh, slam up 1 dB extra. All right, so enough of that uh, dorkiness. Uh, what we're gonna be doing as well is making sure that this little one-to-one -one button is on. And what I'm gonna be shooting for is to put up this gain knob and make sure that my LUFS um, probably will sit around minus nine, minus eight-ish in the loudest section of the song. I'm gonna have a quick little listen to does that make sense am i adding too much to it and then for that i will adjust my look ahead time and my um attack and release uh, plus the oversampling to make sure everything sounds sexy so that's the premises let's actually get to it because uh, this is going to drive me nuts all right uh yeah dither will do in a bit as well so let's slam and go So I'm listening to this type of distortion. So I'm like making sure that that's not there too much. All right. So I think there sounds about right for me. I'm, I'm pushing it as much as possible without getting too much like and what I mean with that Donald Ducky sound is this. So this is basically any comp uh, any um, limiter does this. And the reason it does that is because 
it's a compressor. And if you have a compressor uh, with you know, a brick wall, nothing's going to go over it, and you have a really fast attack and a really fast release time, then you're going to get this type of sound. OK, so let's try to limit that sound so it's not that much. The first thing we can do is we can increase the look ahead. But when we start increasing the look ahead time, then unfortunately we can't go that loud. So let's just push this a bit and see what we can do. I'll leave it on that listening mode. But also we're just staying compressed here. So let's leave that look ahead time pretty fast, uh, but let's start messing with the uh, release time a little bit. So the faster I make the release, the worse it gets. Let's start mess let's start messing with the attack time. That will mean that we completely shave off any transient. Then you get that, like it just goes away. So let's push that a bit. <laughs> so this is kind of going go a little bit nuts. Let's push this as well. I've, to be honest, I've never set a limiter like this before that I listen to just what is taken away. But now let's listen to that again. Go away. Okay, now we also have uh, styles here, which would basically, they're basically uh, set to the um, uh, release and uh, attack amounts, um, so that it's more or less uh, distortion. So let's do a little bit of transparency, try that. So for me, the one that says punchy was the first one I was like, ooh, that's nice. So I'm going to keep the punchy one. It just seems like my low end was allowed to be there a little bit more. All right. Next up, dither. Um, let's go with 16-bit on this one because some samples that were compressed or frozen were set to 16. So there's no need to then put dither above it. Uh, basic optimizer weighted. Oh, man, I should have paid attention with what that means, tits. Um, I think probably basic is gonna be just a little bit of noise going <laughs> Optimized will be a little bit more noise in the low end and the top end and weighted. Oh God, it's probably just <laughs> or even more so. Um, I'll just keep it optimized. It should probably be fine. Uh, it's just a little bit of noise, so don't worry about it. That's how I see dither. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Uh, before I bounce this out, I will go to heavy oversampling. Because the more you go over your oversampling, the more uh, that sound doesn't actually appear as much. Also, I want to quickly check with this Ulean meter to see how my short term or your short term uh, true peak is as well. Oh, I of course also need to make sure that the one-on-one -on -one is turned off and now it's going to get very, very loud. Okay, that looks healthy. Uh, what I'll do... 
the, the thing I always tend to do after I finish the whole project is make sure I listen to the whole song again. And then once I listen to the whole song, I'll write down any little notes that, you know, oh, that snare needs to do a little bit. The low end kind of disappears. The break doesn't really bump as much as I want to. Uh, and I'll fix that in the mix and or in the mastering chain, depending on what the problem is. Um, but I think I'll leave that for the patrons to see. And also for the patrons, you will be able to download this file. So I'll see you guys all again soon. Another project is already on the way. Uh, this time around, I won't be using any special fab filter or sound toys or whatever company. I'll just go with whatever the fuck I want. All right. Much love. Thank you for watching. Take care and uh, have a lovely Thursday.